Hi, and welcome to Counterpoint TV, a YouTube channel dedicated uh, to the humanities. Um, in this video, I'm going to be doing a really short poetry review. Um, the poem in question is uh, Upon Leaving His Mistress by the quote-unquote late convert, Mr. John Wilmot, uh, known formally as the second Earl of Rochester. So, I think I have everything I need. A bit of tobacco, a willingness to be honest, and a willingness to engage with challenging ideas. So, let's start from the beginning. Um, John Wilmot was born in April of uh, 1647. In 1665, he volunteered to play a part in the Second Dutch War. His courage in battle earned him the status of a war hero among the English, and his conduct earned him the intimacy and confidence of King Charles II. Um, it's a question as to whether or not he bothered to maintain or nurture the confidence that he had earned with King Charles throughout his life, but that is a topic for a different video. Um, before I read the poem, I just want to say briefly that I don't have a lot of interest here in talking about the historical context of the poem. Um, what I want to do is to um, find out if there's when to find out if there's any value in this poem, any revelation about human nature in this poem, and in a way that it might relate to us in 2022. Um, when I look at these little antique pieces, I want to find out if there's anything that we can relate to in them. And so that's what I'm going to be. That's what. That's mostly what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'll probably make more videos about John Wilmot, um, and I'll probably be talking about the the uh, historical context a little more, uh, and that's a kind of an academic pursuit, but that's not what I want to do here. So, um, so let's uh, let's take a look at the poem. <clears throat> Upon leaving his mistress. Tis not that I'm weary grown of being yours and yours alone, but with that face can I incline to damn you to be only mine. You, whom some kinder power did fashion, by merit and by inclination, the joy, at least, of one entire nation. Let meaner spirits of your sex with humble aims their thoughts perplex and boast if by their arts they can contrive to make one single happy man. While moved by an impartial sense, favors like nature you dispense with universal influence. The kind seed receiving earth to every grain affords a birth. On her no showers, unwelcomed fall. Her willing womb retains them all. And shall my Celia be confined? No. Live up to thy mighty mind. Be the mistress of mankind. What do I, what do I find interesting about this poem? first and foremost well the uh this woman celia she is so fascinating to the voice of this poem that he cannot in good conscience keep her to himself um the voice of this poem recognizes that celia has a genius and a a, a, a great uh capacity to bring joy and pleasure to others. And he is so selfless and so objective that he has almost no desire to uh, trap her in a way or to selfishly use her. And I think that's a really interesting message, uh, regardless of the historical time. Um, we know in the history of men and women that men have this uh, uh, kind of a reputation as wanting to control women and wanting to uh, 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 keep them confined, to keep them housebound, 
to keep them uh, locked down in a sense. And um, but this, but the but the voice of this poem has absolutely no interest in uh, in confining this woman's agency as a human being and as a person who is capable of giving great joy and pleasure. And I have to ask, is that a modern idea? Is that a postmodern idea? Is that even a feminist idea? Um, and that's what I find really interesting about this poem. Um, so the question uh, I think I want to address right now is um, why do I like this poet John Wilmot to begin with? Well, I tend to like I tend to like um, sort of rebellious, controversial poets. Um, a good example would be Baudelaire. He is one of my heroes, but um, there's a sense of underlying uh, transgression with a lot of these poets, like Baudelaire, almost this sense of uh, intending to crash uh, moral sentiment. There's almost a spirit of Satanism that accompanies a kind of Baudelarian style of poetry. Uh, but with John Wilmot, it's not. I don't. I don't detect that at all. I think that John Wilmot is a um, a cynic in the most classical sense, um, almost a restoration uh, version of Diogenes, the cynic poet of ancient Greece. Um, to be a cynic, I think. You have to be two things. You have to be willing to be brutally honest about the human condition. You also have to have a talent for spotting irony wherever it befalls human nature. And I think that uh, that sums up John Wilmot's poetry. He isn't intending to be um, wicked. He isn't intending to be um, malignant or transgressive. I think he's just an honest poet. And that's why I like him, because he's just honest. So, I think that will conclude my very short review of this poem. I only have one, yeah, I only have one point to make about it which is to ask whether or not um, the central message is in, is empowering to women or if it's uh, feministic in any way whatsoever. Again, um, it seems to me that the, the, uh, the voice of this poem uh, derives great joy from this woman. Um, and great pleasure in her company, and yet this the voice in this poem has absolutely no interest in confining her genius. In fact, uh, he encourages her to spread it far and wide. Um, so that will conclude my review. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.